welcome to Camera Shots, spotlighting the champions of faith into focus. Introducing your host, Janine Fox. What are some of the blessings that will come on a believer or a nation who chooses to obey God's instructional mandate to bless Israel? Excellent question. Well, I started already with Psalms 122, verse 6, Janine, where... Um, it says in Hebrew, Shalu Shlom Yerushalayim Ishlayu Ohavaych. In other words, see to it that Yerushalayim, Jerusalem is in Shalom. Shalom comes from the word Shalem, which means well being, where nothing is lacking, nothing is missing, nothing is broken. And then it says, those that love Israel that way will obtain the same shalom, the same well-being. Hallelujah. And going back to the word in Genesis 12, 3, I want to paraphrase it so that you would understand it. I call it the key of Abraham. They wrote a book about this called the key of Abraham, that when it is put in the uh, open position, it can bring, bring a blessing personally and to a nation. When it is in the curse position, it actually brings about a terrible curse personally and to the nations. Let me explain that more from the Hebrew. So, I will bless those who bless you in Hebrew comes from the word bracha. Bracha comes from the word berech. Berech is the knee. So, I will paraphrase right now. What Yahweh is saying is that he himself, the Almighty, will bow down the knee before those who bow down the knee and humble themselves to bless, to favor, and to care for his people Israel. And so he will bow down the knee, his royal knee, for those that bow down the knee and humble themselves to bless, to favor, to actively care for his people Israel. And then he says that he will curse those who curse her. But it's very revealing because in Israel, this is two words. In the Hebrew, these are two words. One of them is klala and the other one is me'era. He says, I will me'era you if you klala, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and her descendants, the Jewish people of today, Israel of today. And uh, klala, well, klala means to take lightly or to disrespect, to dishonor. While Meera means to utter a word of complete annihilation and destruction. I explain all of that in my book, The Key of Abraham. Um, in, for example, the Klala word, which is take lightly or dishonor. If you go to Proverbs 20, verse 20, it says that he that Klala, fathers or mother, father or mother, their light will be put out in utter darkness. In other words, if you disrespect, you dishonor, you take lightly your father or your mother, then your light, your light is your spirit, will be put out in utter darkness. That's complete damnation, condemnation, and a curse, probably for eternity. And that's by simply breaking the commandment of honoring your father and your mother. And so it doesn't mean that the father and the mother are always perfect or they are doing what is right, but still we are mandated to honor them and not to take lightly their instruction. Of course, if they give us instructions that are ungodly, we cannot follow them, but we still need to be very careful how we tread with our parents. We can definitely see clearly in Genesis um, after the flood when, for example, Ham uncovered his uh, father Noah when he got drunk under the tent and he cursed Canaan, which was the offspring of Ham. So this is a pretty serious issue. And he uses exactly the same terminology like for honoring father and mother to Israel, because Israel is the mother of the nations. From Israel comes uh, uh, the Torah, the Ten Commandments, 
all of the scriptures, the prophets, the writings, the gospel, uh, the, the Messiah, Yeshua, who is a Jew, the Jewish apostles, the 12 that, and the 13, including then the Apostle Paul, that all Jewish that preach the good news to the Gentiles, to the nations, to the Jews and to the Gentiles. And so everything that you have received, if you consider yourself a Christian, uh, but you are actually born again, you're spirit filled, you're covenanted. Everything you have received comes from the Jewish people, comes from Israel. So Israel is the mother of the nations, the one that brought the instruction of the father and the good news of the father to the nations. And so he uses that terminology in Genesis 12, 3. He said, I will utter a word, I will curse, I will utter a word of complete annihilation and destruction, total destruction to those that klala, to those that take Israel lightly or dishonor or respect her in any way. So the truth is that both you personally, your family, um, your church, your congregation, and your nation will be greatly honored by the Almighty when you decide to honor Israel by prayer, by action, by giving, and uh, the way that you speak about her as well. That's the reason why my book, um, uh, you know, The Key of Abraham is important. Uh, you can read it. It's a very small little booklet, but it can really help you to understand the blessing or the curse. And so great, great blessings to those and great honor to those that honor Israel. What an interesting parallel between honoring our mother and father, our natural parents, to honoring Israel, the mother of the nations. I've never heard that before, but it makes a lot of sense. So all of our viewers out there, we choose to what? Baraka. We choose to Baraka, Israel. Archbishop Dominica, there are many who feel that Israel is the cause of most of the troubles facing the world today. The Bible says that the Lord will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling for all nations. Israel has continually over history been afflicted with wars and terrorist attacks and you name it. Now we know that the Bible says that our king shall rule from Jerusalem. He'll be king of kings and Lord of lords and the Jerusalem shall be the city of the great king. So we win considering all this that we know how the story ends that God never sleeps. He watches over Jerusalem day and night. He never slumbers. Why is it so important to pray for Israel and the Jewish people? Okay, first of all, we need to put things in order here, okay? Genesis 12, 3 says, I will bless those who bless you, Abram. He repeated that to Isaac. He repeated that to Jacob and all of the descendants of Israel. And then he said, I will curse those who curse you. So regardless of the political scenario in Israel, which most people interpret very, very wrong because they don't interpret it from the place of the covenant where about God promised that land to to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, up to and their descendants. So it's up to 1,000 generations from the Nile to the Euphrates. And until all of Israel possesses that land, there, there is not really going to be peace. So we need to realize this is the situation because Israel is being contested by her neighbors and by uh, the, the, the a thing called the Palestinian cause that is actually not a cause. It is Hitler's child. I've got an entire video about this because what happens is that the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, Haj Amin El Husseini, visited Hitler in 1941 when the final solution was raging to murder all of the Jews and to send them to the death camps and to the gas chambers. And um, this Grand Mufti, Muslim, the biggest Muslim personality, the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, he came to Hitler and he asked him to raise him up an army within the parameters of the land of Israel so that the final solution could continue on inside of the land of Israel. And Hitler, of course, agreed. And the army that was raised up was the Palestinian Liberation Organization, PLO, was headed for, by Arafat for many, many years. And then out of it splintered many different other factions that their major purpose was the final solution of the Jewish people within the land. And what Psalms 83 says, and that's very important because it says your enemies, Yahweh, are making an uproar. 
and they have unified together, they have united together against your sheltered ones, against your people, which is the people of Israel, and their purpose, and they've wanted the pastures that you have given to them. All of it is in Psalms 83, and it says they are wanting to obliterate the name so that the name of Israel will be remembered no more, and therefore in all of the maps of the Palestinian authorities and even many Arab schools, uh, there is no existence of Israel, there is no existence of Jerusalem, there is existence of a, number, a land by the name of Palestine and a city by the name of Al-Quds. But let me tell you something, Palestine is the name that the Romans call the land that is the covenant name is Israel. The Romans call it Provincia Palestina when they vanquished the Jewish people in year 70 AD and Hadrian leveled Jerusalem to the ground. And he changed the covenant name for a, the name of Palestina that is derived from the Philistines, the arch enemies of Israel. And so he called it Philistine land or Palestina. And then he leveled Jerusalem and he called it Elia Capitolina because he put Jupiter Capitolinus on the Temple Mount at the site of the temple. Later on, the Muslims, many years later, I'm talking about, about uh, over 500 years later, uh, during the 7th century, almost 600 years later, the, the, the Islam rises up and they go ahead and, and a man, a Muslim by the name of Abdul Malik, he places a shrine there for Muhammad. And that shrine is called the Dome of the Rock, that golden dome that you see everywhere. And then they built a mosque called the Mosque of Al-Aqsa. Now, uh, and they, uh, that's it, they did it there. But you know, the Quran itself doesn't mention Jerusalem not even one time, nothing, what? absolutely zero. But then they began to claim that after Mecca and Medina, the third most important and holy place for Islam is Jerusalem. However, Jerusalem is not even mentioned in the Quran. And so now when God, Elohim, decides to bring the Jewish people back to the land, he starts working at it already by the end of the 19th century. And then there were many pogroms in Europe that tried to exterminate the Jews. And then came the Holocaust, the Shoah. Out of it, a remnant survived that Shoah, that horrendous Holocaust. That all of it was done in the name of Jesus Christ and in the name of Christianity, by the way. Everything. Even Hitler, you know, he had the cross being raised on high in, in, in Berlin, saying, you then rouse, so you, uh, Jewish out, because because you murdered Christ. And so that, that was the way that all of this happened. Out of that, then Yahweh opened the way for the Jewish people to be established back in the land and for the land to be called Israel again. Hallelujah. The covenant name that God, Elohim, called his land, the covenant name that he called his people, the people of of Israel. There were many, uh, you know, debates if it will be called Judah, if it will be called Israel, but they decided it will be called Israel, not Palestine. Already from 1948, the land is not called Provincia Palestina, that the Romans called it, but rather back to the covenant name because God is restoring Israel. Anybody that opposes this restoration will put himself in the bad side of God, in the, in the part of the curse. Because he says in Genesis 12, 3, I will bless those who bless Israel yes. and I will curse those who curse Israel. And I tell you, that is a very serious issue to put yourself against the Almighty on the side of the blessing or the curse. I will paraphrase more if you want me to about, um, about the blessing and the curse of this. But praying for Israel is, is mandatory. Praying is not enough to pray. Psalms 122 verse 6 says, See to it. In, in actually, it's not only pray for the peace of Jerusalem, they will prosper those who love her, but it actually in Hebrew it is see to it that all is well with Jerusalem that represents Israel and all the Jewish people. And those that love her that way in prayer and in action, in giving, in action, in prayer, in going, those will prosper, will be in shalom, in well-being, mm. just like you pray and see to it and function for the shalom of Jerusalem. And that's what we do in Unify. That's what I'm entreating you uh, to do today because it will be the difference between the blessing and the curse for you and family and nation. What an education.
This information is revolutionary. We need to rewrite the history books. I mean, if the general masses knew this information, which you've just revealed today, then we could tell our churches, we could tell our children, we could tell our pastors, we could re-educate our governments. And believe me, the world would be a much better place. Can you suggest a sample prayer for those who don't have the gift of intercession, but they desire to pray for Israel and the Jewish people, but just can't find the right words to say? Sure, Janine, with pleasure. Um, I will do that and I will base myself on um, a prayer that I believe is a rudder or a scripture that is a rudder. It was given to Israel. <laughs> All the word was given to Israel. Uh, and it's 2 Chronicles seven fourteen. It says, If my people that are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. I call it the menorah of revival, the menorah of intercession. A menorah is a seven branch candelabra. Now, first of all, concerning intercession, uh, you know, the, the word of God in Romans 8 tells us that we do not know how to pray. And the spirit prays with utterance that, you know, we do not know. So the, it's very important that you get filled with the Holy Spirit, okay? And that you begin to pray in tongues and ask the Holy Spirit to help you intercede. But this scripture gives you a frame for the intercession. And the frame is first humble yourself and pray, but that's not enough. First, you need to humble yourself. And I'll tell you something that I've discovered. I discovered that humbling myself when I pray means that I do not come to pray with preconceived ideas. In other words, I'm open for the spirit of prophecy to come and pray through me. So I do not come with preconceived ideas. The Holy Spirit will show me how to pray. Not only that, I may have to put some of my own mindsets on the altar. So my prayer first is this one. And you can do exactly what I do. I just said, Father in heaven. I empty myself from anything that may obstruct you. Thank you for coming into me and praying through me according to what you want me to pray all the way from the third heavens. And so when I do that, then I go to pray in the spirit and I pray in tongues in the spirit. Very important for all of you to get filled with the Holy Spirit and fire because without his power, we really can't do nothing of too much meaning. Right. So um, just get filled. I pray in the spirit and then it says, seek my face. In other words, it's not enough that I just pray. I pray, I pray, I pray, but then I seek his face because he may want to sh uh, show me something. He may want to sh short circuit my understanding on things so that I will pray exactly right. And then I seek his face. He may also convict me of sin at that point. Maybe he may show me or you that we have been compromising or that we've been lukewarm and that or that maybe we've been in immorality or in disobedience or rebellion or unbelief or doubt of have had a death wish and wanted to die. I mean, he may convict us of whatever th uh, things that may be. Maybe he will show us that we have a root of bitterness and we need to repent of that root of bitterness because, uh, you know, he says that if we do not forget and uh, forgive others, he will not forgive us. So we may need to repent of a root of bitterness. When we may need to forgive like Yeshua on the cross when he forgave all of the Romans that were nailing him to the cross. And he said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. And um, so, you know, you know, it could it could very well be uh, that he will give us or you that revelation when you ask him and seek his faith. So you go through repentance. That means you confess, you renounce it, you break it off you and you clean yourself up. Hallelujah. With the name and the blood of Yeshua to continue praying. And then he says, seek, therefore he says, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. So this is a time of turning and repentance, hallelujah, of everything that has offended the father. And I tell you, one of the things that most offend the father is this identity theft, where about most people have not yet submitted to the fact that already from the 90s, he's been knocking on the door of the ecclesia, 
uh, the called out ones, all the congregations, that he wants to restore back the gospel from the first century, the gospel made in Zion and the Jewish Messiah's identity, including his name and including also the word and the Torah and the commandments that need to be written in the heart by the Holy Spirit. And so many people have been resisting and rejecting him and they're in rebellion. And that's the reason why the prayers are going nowhere because we see in the Psalms that it says that he uh, that shuts his ears from hearing the law, even his prayer will be uh, an abomination. So we need to hear Yeshua and the Ruach and the Holy Spirit to come and show us in what way have we broken his commandment? How have we offended him? People get offended all the time, but they don't understand that they're offending the Father. Very, very seriously. How have we offended him? How have we had pride in our hearts? All of these things is seek my face and turn from your wicked ways. So there's four things that we do as we prepare to stand in the gap in intercession. We humble ourselves to put all our preconceived ideas. We empty ourselves to be filled with him. The second thing is that we pray. The third, we seek his face. We turn from our wicked ways, any ways that he will show us when we seek his face. And then we, it says that he will do three things. He will hear Shema from heaven. He will forgive our sin and he will heal our land. Therefore, after you've done those four, you are really ready to intercede. An intercessor is not ready until then. So when you've done these four, your due diligence for him to hear you, to forgive your sin and now for you to be able to stand like a Daniel and like a Nehemiah for your own nation, for your own city, for the church. And then first you need to be cleansed and then you need to go before him and said, me and my people have seen before you and then identify with them. But now you can stand before him because you have cleansed yourself from everything that offends him. So you said, me and my people have seen before you, me and my nation have come against Israel and they've stood in the United Nations against Israel. Um, me and my people have had anti-Semitism and uh, we have hatred the Jewish people secretly or outspokenly. We have not fought for them. We have not stood for us, for them as, as for the mother of the nations, which is Israel. And uh, Father, we also have uh, sinned against you by uh, the uh, shedding innocent blood through terrible abortions, but also by killing many Jews in the name of Jesus Christ in the past, for example. Uh, and our ancestors did that. We asked your forgiveness, Father. And we begin to ask his forgiveness to confess and ask his, his forgiveness for the sins of our nation, the sins of the church, and all of these things. And then when you are in that mode, then technically you're repeating what you did for yourself now towards the nation, towards the city, towards the church, whoever you are interceding for. Hallelujah. And then his promises that he will hear from heaven, he will forgive the sin and he will heal the land. This is an excellent model for prayer. You have just uncovered the main reason why so many Christians around the world experience divine delays and unanswered prayer, but how they can receive total breakthrough and then be positioned to be a great intercessor for the nations. Thank you. You have a Bible school called GRM. Tell us what is the curriculum for GRM and how has your Bible school transformed the spiritual perception and the lives of your students who have graduated? Now, if anyone wants to attend your school in Jerusalem but can't get there, uh, do you have any other options that they can enroll, like an online Bible school? Well, first of all, GRM means Global Revival Map Bible School. It's the only Israeli okay. Bible school that I know that has been exported to the nations. That's completely online. Um, and um, so you, you don't actually have to be in Israel to study GRM. You can go and register online and study online or order the course to come to your home. So it's Wonderful. really uh, good enough for everyone in the face of the planet. Uh, the curriculum of GRM is totally amazing how it happened. In fact, when I began to tape GRM that uh, is um, 
uh, you know, about 90 videos uh, and 90 teachings, I was actually going to tape a TV program that was called Revival Cry. That was the TV program because a TV station had opened for me in Florida. I was in Israel at the time. I was in a lot uh, on the Red Sea at the time. And um, I was going to tape this so that I had volunteers with me and others that were helping me to tape Revival Cry. And I remember one of the volunteers that came on the first day says to me, you know, um, could you please give me your sermon notes so that we'll know every episode what you're going to say so we can time it to become exactly 2830, which is a normal TV program. Yes. And I, asked, I answered her and I said, Beloved, do you see that room over there here, this little room? Between episode and episode, I'm going to go into that little room and I'm going to ask the Father to do download to me exactly what he wants me to say. And so she was absolutely astounded because she didn't believe that that would be possible for me being a novice at the time. It was in 2009 taping TV programs that I would make it. And that means she thought to herself, this is going to be a very long month and it's going to take very long to tape everything. So anyways. Right. So I did exactly what I said between episode and episode. Yave would give me the scriptures for the next episode. He would download it on me as I'm speaking prophetically. And every episode came out that way seamlessly. Absolutely wow. not one episode needed to be repeated. And Thanks every God. one of them were exactly the amount of timing that they needed to be for the TV program. And I managed to tape, um, uh, I, I believe it was 89 actually, not 80, but 89 episodes in 10 days. Well, it was actually in six days. Then I rested on Shabbat on the seventh day. And then I taped, uh, you know, four more days. So altogether in 10 days, I had all the 89 episodes taped, which means that I taped an average of 8.9, if not nine a day. Not one Amazing. of them was repeated. And it was totally fresh manna from heaven based on the scriptures. And it touches on history and Bible and prophecy in every way. And especially how to reconnect back to the gospel that came out of Israel on the first century and to Israel as the mother of the nations and how to repent from anti-Semitism and replace my theology, get free from it, and how to begin to function powerfully in the anointing and the power of God. So the curriculum Amen. comprehends everything, all the way from the Hebrew foundations of faith to uh, what, ju what the judgment of God means, all the way to uh, functioning in the power of the Holy Spirit with the Torah written in our hearts. And what I begin to receive from students that went to study GRM is that it transformed them completely. I've had so many wow. testimonies you just get into grmbibleschool.com. And you will see also that there's many testimonies there. People were, their minds were made right. There are some people, uh, their memory was restored. Other people had their marriages restored. Other people had oh, uh, their faith in the Messiah restored. Uh, people absolutely went through a complete transformation of life. And really? no, it didn't, it was only, not only for the Bible school time, but rather they've continued on until today with a serious change because this Bible school also teaches you the lifestyle of the Jewish apostles of the first century. And so, yeah, you are invited. Anybody's invited to go and study it online or order it to your home. Prepare yourself to be a leader in these end times because this is the only Bible school that I know that is to totally free from religious doctrines of replacement theology and that, you know, Yeshua is now at the door and he's burning everything that will burn. If it's wood, hay and stubble, it will burn. But if it is gold and silver and precious stones, it will remain. And that Bible school that became a Bible school, it was, it was a revival, <laughs> actually a revival broadcast that I was making is actually gold and silver and precious stones that will remain. Now, let me tell you how it became a Bible school as I finish this. 
my secretary was doing the timeline when we finished the Bible school and she looked at me and I looked at her and I saw that it was done line upon line, precept upon precept. And I looked at her and she looked at me and we said, this is a Bible school. But I'm going to tell it to you even deeper than that. In the 19, this is 2009, okay? But in the 90s, I had a prophetess coming to me from California. She had been for a time the third person in our board of Kadesh Map Ministries, Kadesh Vessel of Fire Ministries, that started in 1991. And this was uh, Peggy Cole. She was a very well-known prophetess at the time. She came to me in Israel and she said, I see a vision that you're going to have a Bible school in a suitcase. And the suitcase is going to be sent all over the world and it's going to be stamped with the stamp of many nations. So oh, on the suitcase, Jesus. the stamp of many, many nations. And uh, it's going to go all over the world. And I was thinking to myself, gosh, if I had a Bible school in a suitcase, that would be a heavy suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine to put all the history that I need to put in there and all the scriptures and everything and that that will be a very, and the workbooks and whatnot, yes. a very heavy suitcase. Now, fast forward to 2009, by 2010, when my team was packing GRM to go to the nations as a Bible school, at that time, there were these mini suitcases. There was this little, you know, uh, kind of um, cases where you put the DVDs or the videos in. Understand that in 1994 or 95, when Peggy gave me the, the word, the prophetic word, DVDs didn't exist then. And uh, the cases didn't exist then. Uh, there was not the internet then. Uh, there was no cell phones then. Understand, this is another era. And so now in 2010, when they are packing it in these cases that had a little handle, it looked like a mini suitcase with all the DVDs of the Bible school. I looked at it, my eyes got opened up, and I said, the Bible school in a suitcase has been born, and the word that the prophetess gave me has been fulfilled. And indeed, exactly as she gave the word, this Bible school has been all over the world. I cannot count Praise how many God. people in how many nations have studied it and have been able to be set free from replacement theology, reconnect back to the original gospel that came out of Israel 2,000 years ago and learn, hallelujah, how to walk with him in power, in authority, in anointing, uh, in obedience, in godliness, Hallelujah, and in a covenant love for Israel. And the Holy Spirit just reminded me one uh, testimony that I had is uh, I have a video there where I tell my testimony of how I was set free from smoking cigarettes uh, okay. and how the Holy Spirit took the cigarettes away from me right after I got saved. And so he set me free miraculously from it. And there was this woman that had been a Christian for many years, maybe 30 years, but she was a heavy smoker. And when she, and she was studying my Bible school, GRM. And um, when she comes to the video where I tell my testimony about it, then all of a sudden the Spirit of God fell upon her and she repented from smoking and she never smoked again. This is the kind Praise of miracles God. that have happened to people. Thank and you. let me tell you Thank that you, this Yeshua. Bible school is being studied by children as small as seven years old and by people as old as into their late 80s. Amazing. So honestly, it's for everybody, including some people in Australia that had studied that. Uh, a man that was in his 70s told me that he never could remember a scripture ever, not by heart. But after he studied GRM, his memory was restored and he could remember scripture by heart. This is the kind of miracles we're having with the GRM uh, Israeli Bible School that Yahweh has downloaded on me. So take it. Well, that's all wonderful news, and what a glorious praise report. And finally, the last question that I'm sure many of you out there are asking, how can God use me the way he's used you, Archbishop Dominica? Do you have any divine keys for those who are hungering for a deeper relationship with Yeshua? That will change their life forever? Wow, great question. I think I go back to the beginning. That's perfect circle, right? Uh, when I showed you that I had a book that is called Yes, right? The book that, this one, 
Mm -hmm. uh, that, yes. Oh, it's upside down. So e here, the book called Yes, um, where I tell my testimony of salvation. And this has marked my walk. My walk has been marked by that word yes. In other words, even if I don't want it, and I know that he has will for me, I say yes to him and I say all the yes. way. Yes. And I make it a point that I am not going to doubt his promises. I am not going to doubt his word. Even if I'm not seeing it in the natural, whatever it takes, I am going to trust what he says, even if it takes years. And I always give this example that, uh, you know, we, the people of Israel used to say, well, still say every year in Passover, uh, during the Pesach, next year in Jerusalem, in rebuilt Jerusalem. Well, we did that throughout 2,000 years of exile, and we kept on repeating, next year in, in rebuilt Jerusalem. And one day, hallelujah, the 14th of May, 1948, then we were back, and yes. it was fulfilled. So exactly in the same way, I walk with Yah, like my ancestors did, hallelujah. I will not give him excuses of why I'm not going to do his will, and why I'm not willing to repent of anything that he shows me. And the second thing is I am going to trust him no matter what and trust his word, no matter what and no matter what. And from that place, I will tell the devil to flee seven ways from me at every given moment. Now, every time that I minister and from the beginning, even before I was ordained to the ministry, I took him by his word. He said that these signs will follow them that believe in my name. I've already told you his real name is Yeshua. So they will cast out devils yes. and they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And, you know, they will pick up serpents and they will not be harmed. Drink poison, they will not be harmed. Not that I'm going to pick up a serpent on purpose. It's just simply that if it happens to, you know, come against me, I have authority against that serpent and, and the venom of it. And uh, the same, I mean, if somebody tries to poison me over, or I drink something that I shouldn't have drunk. Uh, I mean, I went to more than 50 nations to preach the gospel, hundreds of cities. Who knows what I've drank, right? I mean, you know never know and so but, but I claim that I declare that in my life because that's what he said so I don't doubt that what he promised is true so from day one I would go and exercise that what he said and I would tell him this simply look you know I'm going to speak but you'd better show up because I have nothing to give of myself. I've actually come to the conclusion, just like Catherine Kuhlman in her time and that I am absolutely nothing without him but with him, I can do all things. And therefore I said, I really mean it. I can do nothing without you. I can do nothing without your Holy Spirit. I can do nothing without your anointing. But with it, I can do everything. So, hallelujah, I'm going to go as you send me. But you make sure that you show up. And I'm going to tell you something. He has never failed. So, that's it. Amen. And he will never fail us. <laughs> yep, that's right. Thank you for that, Archbishop Dominica. I'm reminded also of what John the Baptist said. He said that I may decrease, that he can increase. Well, beloved, we want to thank you for joining our program today on Camera Shots for these two glorious programs like them share them with all your friends your friends list all those who you know this information will transform their lives i really believe that every believer and every person needs to hear this information that's been revealed in these programs today and remember to go to archbishop dominico's website the united nations for israel.org we have the, her website there on the screen where you can find out more about her ministry. And remember to buy those books, The Identity Theft, and yes, and all the other books that will change your life and be a great blessing to you. It's truly manna from heaven. Well, Archbishop Dominica, it has been so wonderful and a great blessing to have you on our show. We have truly had a Shabbat banquet by your presence on our show. This will not be the last time on our show 
we're going to have you back again. Thank you for joining us. And may the Lord bless you. May the Lord increase you. May he continue to use you in this new season as a fireball of glory in the kingdom of God. With this message that you have burning in your heart, we love you and God bless you. Thank you, Janine. I so much appreciate your true, genuine hunger for truth and for the word of Yah and also your obedience to communicate it to your people. Hallelujah. And that connects me with that dream of yours when he said, get out of the house. He wants people to get out of replacement theology and get out of the established Christianity that has divorced the church from its original foundations and the original identity of the Messiah. So I am so happy about your obedience to him. Hallelujah and be happy to be back in your show. And if you allow me, then I will just finish with giving all of you the blessing, the same blessing that Aaron the high priest gave the children of Israel in the desert. We would be honored. Thank you. Everyone, would you lift your hands to receive the blessing of Yah? Thank you. Yivarechecha Adonai vaishmarecha Ya'er Yahweh Adonai panav alecha veichunecha Yisa Yahweh Adonai panav alecha vayasem lecha shalom Yahweh is blessing you and keeping you Yahweh is making his face to shine down upon you. Yahweh is lifting up his countenance to you and giving you his shalom. Can everyone sing with us? Amen. Shalom, shalom. Thank you, Janine, and thank you all. Shalom. And beloved, shalom to you. God bless you. Until we meet again on the next Camera Shots with another champion of faith.